Hi, uh, good morning, good afternoon, or good night, depending on which part of the world you are right now. So uh, we will about to start our webinar. And while our um, presenter is preparing the presentation, I would like to introduce myself. Uh, my name is Ron Alasco, and I'm a Senior Trade Commissioner of International Trade Council. Now, I, will give, I am the host for today, so I will give you some instruction about uh, today's webinar. So basically, all of the attendees is in a listen mode only so that um, the present presenter will be able to present all the, the things that he needs to present on this uh, presentation today. So we have to wait for him to finish the presentation. And then if you have some question, um, there is a Q&A tab on the left side of the screen below attendees. So if you have some questions, just please broadcast your message there. And then our presenter, we're going to um, answer your question. All right, now, if you can hear me, just please type in yes or broadcast the message. So I will send the message right now, if you can hear me. One second. So uh, please type in yes, if you can hear me clearly. Okay, thank you. Um, I assume that um, other participants can hear me clearly now. Okay, thank you. All right, perfect. Thank you so much for the response. And um, let me just um, introduce my um, the presenter for today. So um, our presenter is um, His Excellency Keith Azopardi. He is the ambassador of Malta to the United States. And the webinar is about Malta as a vibrant economy to open for business. So it's uh, technically about doing business in Malta. So um, after this um, presentation um, and after the Q&A, um, I will send you a link. It's actually a quick survey because we're thinking of, we're doing a trade mission in Malta next year and we would like to um, know your thoughts about it. So again, and this webinar is recorded and we will send the presentation via email within 24 to 48 hours. So I will uh, give the floor to the presenter. Um, again, His Excellency Kit Azopardi, Ambassador of Malta to the United States. Go ahead, sir. Thank you so much. And uh, hello, everybody. Uh, please forgive me if I press any wrong key. This is the first time I'm using uh, uh, webinar. Uh, so I apologize. I apologize in advance. I intend to give you um, a short presentation um, about about Malta, um, and I would be more than willing to um, answer any of your questions or any queries which interest you the most and which maybe I have not uh, addressed in this presentation. Um, many people have never heard about Malta, and, and I don't blame anybody. It's a small island in the middle of the Mediterranean Sea. It's detached from mainland Europe uh, with a market of less than half a million people. Some may even have the impression that it's one of those uh, secretive places where uh, all the unknown is happening. but. Let me give you some uh, brief outline, which might contradict, hopefully, at least uh, this assumption. Malta has been a member of the European Union since May 2004, and also a member of the Schengen since May, since December 2007, uh, meaning having the euro as its currency, and in other words, having access to the biggest single market um, on this planet. Its geographical position, which is in the middle, right in the middle of the Mediterranean Sea, right between Europe and North Africa, with over 70 bilateral agreements on avoidance of double taxation, and also located in the path of one of the big, biggest maritime routes, is what, um, in my opinion, makes Malta a hub for companies to use as a springboard uh, to go global, as I will have the opportunity uh, to explain later in this, in this presentation. 
these are some figures. Um, um, the past 12 months have been much like the five years that preceded them, characterized by remarkable success in several fields. Um, Malta has experienced a threefold economic expansion, uh, a country that has become used to regularly registering a deficit uh, is now registering a surplus, which it, it is reinvesting in, in future proofing itself, if I say so. We have achieved full employment and we are now not only providing job opportunities to all the Maltese workforce, um, but also for thousands of others who gladly uh, come to Malta and are mostly welcome from all over the globe. Um, we have seen, especially in the past three years, uh, a continued flow of foreign direct investment, as well as, I put it this way, an increased externalization of Malta-based uh, enterprises. This has indeed been confirmed by the key rating agencies, which retain a stable outlook, as they commented also positively on economic prospects and the government's fiscal consolidation program, um, which is supported by their view of Malta's um, fairly strong institutional and governance effectiveness, as well as its resilient uh, economy. Um, we can all agree that economic diversification is a high priority vector, especially for island nations around the globe. And as this slide shows, Malta is managing to achieve the right balance among the different sectors. Now, without any doubt, the high level of FDI in Malta over the past years have proven to be a crucial element in our diversification, diversification strategy. Um, something that I must say, many developing island economies uh, struggle with, especially where there is limited land mass population and also, and also uh, economy. Um, I'm gonna give you some statistics, but I will be very fast. Um, the EU, the European Union still remains Malta, I must say, a uh, trading partner. In 2018, the EU accounted for more than half of Malta's imports, around uh, circa 53.5%, and 48% of Malta's, Malta's export. Trade volume with the United States has been stable in recent years, um, Although, although, in my opinion, there is much uh, room uh, for, for improvement and uh, um, at least the, the prospects are, are looking good. Now, let me give you a very brief outline of um, the various uh, economic sectors, not all, but the most and the key sectors um, which, which uh, makes the economy of Malta. A mainstay of the Maltese economy um, with well-established roots dating back, I say, to the 1950s, uh, the sector, the manufacturing sector, remains vibrant and competitive due um, to a continuous innovation in products and processes. One could say that this is a perfect example of the island's ability to adapt to changing circumstances. Uh, today, the sector has moved far beyond its roots to focus upon high value added operations, which as you know very well, require uh, a skilled uh, workforce. Indeed, local operations are cited for the high quality of their product, as well as their flexibility and the ability to adapt to, to clients' needs. This has an, ensured that Malta remains a competitive uh, player in the sector. The sector itself is further diversified with operations involved in the production of autom automotive components, uh, medical devices, pharmaceuticals, 
electronic components, um, and not the least high quality injection molding, many with a high research and also development uh, um, component. Then we have the life sciences and, and medical, medical services. The sector has a wide ranging presence in the Maltese economy with well established operations in uh, the manufacturing of pharmaceuticals uh, and medical devices, uh, the production of software for the healthcare industry, as well as a growing um, healthcare tourism sector. All this has been boosted by the country's workforce, um, as well as effective connectivity with foreign markets. In order to further develop this field, um, Malta Enterprise, which is the uh, public corporation dealing with any foreign direct investment uh, coming to the island, has developed what we call it the Malta Life Sciences Park, um, containing high-end facilities for the chemistry, biology, and digital imaging sectors, uh, adjoining the main University of Malta, um, the main teaching hospital, as well as the National um, Oncology Center. The physical facilities available on the island are also further backed up uh, by a raft of attractive support measures, which are specifically designed um, to assist companies in research and development activities. Um, and all this is what makes Malta an attractive option for investors in this sector. Data science. Bolstered by the strong ICT infrastructure and by multiple links to the rest of the world, um, this is a sector which is not in any way limited by the country's island context. One can find a wide range of activities uh, within the sector, ranging from software development to online technical support services um, for a global client base. The educational institution um, institutions in the country have also developed accordingly to the needs of the industry, um, producing qualified personnel to fill the vacancies um, in the steadily and I mean it, steadily expanding sector. This cooperative relationship um, with the educational bodies is one of the many reasons uh, most often cited by entrepreneurs who have set up operations in Malta and seen, seen them grow um, over the years. Another interesting sector um, which has of of aviation but before before i uh, talk a little bit about aviation i wish to go back um to to uh, to data science because i forgot to mention uh, an important an important sector within this field Besides its reputation uh, for its online gaming industry, I don't know how aware you are, but Malta is a hub in Europe uh, for online gaming companies. And with the United Kingdom leaving um, the European Union, uh, more countries, um, more companies, especially those based in Gibraltar, are, are continuing to move to Malta. But besides uh, the online gaming industry, Malta is also set to become a central hub in the Mediterranean and Europe for video game developments and esports, especially following the uh, recent launch of our national strategy uh, in this sector. Malta's vision for the video games development and esports uh, sector includes several strategic uh, initiatives. Uh, these are set to include such things as a European model for tax rebates, 
direct grant schemes for innovation, um, a fund for the development of video games, and also investments in new facilities required for game development uh, related courses. It also includes a bursary program to attract um, local and foreign graduate students to further their studies with local institutions whilst working in the industry. This is what makes it interesting. Not to mention uh, an incubator space for games development uh, startups. And now I, I will move on to the Asian sector, as I have indicated uh, earlier on. This is a sector which has seen very strong growth over the last decade, as I have uh, already, already said, uh, especially with the presence of a number of quality operations uh, in the maintenance, repair, and overhaul sector, but also uh, a growing cluster of companies uh, working in aviation software, um, UAV development, which is something um, which is really growing, flight training, and also back office support for the aviation industry. This area um, received a further boost, if I may say so, with the development of uh, the so-called South Aviation Park which is a project designed to hold uh, MRO facilities airside at the Malta International Airport, where most of the companies, um, some of which are indicated also here in this presentations, the presentation are, are located. In fact, it's a central location as well as a uh, well-trained workforce is what makes Malta a very uh, viable choice for a potential investment in this field, not to mention our geographical uh, position, um, which uh, makes it uh, makes Malta uh, an interesting hub also as a transit as a transit uh, place. The recent um, news has been that um, one of the most popular airlines Ryanair, um, in Europe uh, has um, created a new subsidiary called Malta Air whereby they are bringing most of the aircrafts uh, across Europe um, which will be based um, registered, certified and also maintained uh, in Malta uh, which of course increase drastically the, the connectivity uh, to other parts of, of Europe. Other growth sectors. While traditional growth sectors, such as tourism, which remains one of our uh, main industry, um, and itself tourism is also diversified, um, such as the English language schools, which are doing extremely good. Uh, conference tourism is big. Sports tourism is also something which attracts a lot of people, and so on and so forth. Um, the film industry, which many um, are not aware, but Malta um, is a location which is often used by the top producers in Hollywood and Bollywood, uh, and where many, many movies were shot, such as Gladiator, uh, Troy, Captain Phillips, and so on and so forth. And manufacturing, as I have said earlier on, have been sustained through competitiveness. New emerging sectors, whether it's healthcare, such as medical tourism, but not just, um, including energy, education, and not the least, logistics, have attracted considerable investment in recent years. Malta is, I dare to say, considered as one of the fastest booming economies in the European Union, which has managed to sustain and maintain sustainable economic growth even during challenging times. And this could be verified if one checks the statistics 
of the European Union in the past six years. At the same time, we are creating an environment that allows emerging new technologies to flourish and grow. Um, having cemented our reputation as the blockchain island, following the introduction of a unique regulatory framework uh, last year on uh, distribu uh, digital distributed technology, distributed ledger technologies, DLT, uh, which have attracted major businesses and startups in the sector um, to Malta, our ambition now is to create models which would allow artificial intelligence to use Malta as a springboard to go global. We believe that artificial intelligence um, should be embraced and not stifled. Malta should be um, a, a disruptor um, rather than a follower. Um, that's our philosophy, at least in order to bring about positive social and also economic, of course, um, transformation. This is indeed the basis of the recently launched document entitled Malta, the ultimate AI launchpad, a strategy and vision for artificial intelligence in Malta 2030. And as we are speaking, uh, we are busy drafting a regulatory framework um, when it comes to artificial intelligence. As I said, we want to be the government that becomes one of the first that is AI powered and leads by example. Uh, we are committed to implement pilot projects in priority areas like education, healthcare, transport, and also customer relations. After all, we encounter AI daily on a daily basis from the algorithms uh, controlling our news field uh, also to the use of um, search engines, right? Malta, in fact, will become the first country to launch a national AI certification program, which will be built on Malta's ethical AI framework. Um, and the aim is to create trust in AI, um, transparency, and above all, um, accountability. The program will be voluntary initially um, and aims to provide applicants with valuable recognition in the marketplace that their AI systems developed in a transparent and responsible manner. Certification would be given after um, an audit um, by independent examiners um, takes place. And these are some of uh, the end users, which are um, uh, also based uh, on the island. But why Malta? Um, this is one of the most questions which uh, I'm often asked, um, needless to say. Malta is an island of stability and with decades of experience and a welcoming um, innovative mindset um, and this shows from our especially our recent um, approach towards um, emerging new technologies it is a forward-looking destination with a very open business-centric commercial community that stands tall as a new member state and has a proven record of economic success. One of the good things about Malta is while we have a bipartisan system, and as in any other country, political parties disagree, when it comes um, to uh, economic development, there is an absolute consensus. So irrespective of whether there is the current party in government, and tomorrow there could be another party in government, Nothing changes when it comes to Malta's approach um, to business. In no small part, Malta's rise into the ranks of Europe's fastest um, growing economies has been driven by the island's uh, reputation for stability, 
predictability and also security, as I said. A robust EU compliant regulatory framework, a diverse ecosystem, which is very important to businesses, and a deep talent pool is what also helped companies from around the world uh, to find opportunities for doing business in Malta. Behind Malta's ascent uh, is a combination of sound uh, policy making and a pro business environment. And this development has largely been attributed to its focus on knowledge and value added industry. I would like to end my presentation here. Um, I just wanted to give you a taste of what and how our economy is diversified. Of course, I could not go into more detail about um, other sectors which are of vital importance, such as maritime, uh, logistics, uh, pharmaceuticals, and other sectors of the economy. However, um, at least I was able, hopefully, to give you uh, a teaser of what uh, Malta's economy and why Malta's economy has been flourishing, uh, and particularly in the last uh, six years. I will end up my presentation here, and I would be more than happy, whoever um, wishes to, either to reply to your Q&A here on this webinar, or whoever wishes to contact me directly, my email is keith, K-E-I-T-H, dot at sopardi a z z o p a r d i at gov for government g o v dot m t thank you so much thank you for that wonderful uh, presentation sir so now we um i sent you the email address of um mr asopardi on the q and a tab now, there are two options. If you have questions, you can um, click the raise your hand icon, and then I will allow you to speak, or you can actually um, type in on the Q&A tab. Now, before that, I will have a poll here. And also, I, will ha I have here some um, link that you need to answer because um, International Trade Council will be having a trade mission in Malta next year. So I'll put it on the Q&A. Now, uh, I'm seeing here someone raising hands. Let me just, Mr. Robert Kwasi, I will let you talk right now. Go ahead, please. Mr. Kwasi? Hello? Yes, yeah, you can go ahead and ask the question now. Uh, yeah, yeah, my name is Robert. Uh, I'm calling from Ghana, all the way from Ghana. I'm a fellow of ITC. And I'm grateful to join. I you. cannot hear you. I cannot hear you properly. Can you kindly repeat? Yeah, I said I'm grateful for the opportunity, and I'm calling all the way from Ghana, West Africa. And oh. uh, it's good that we are having this opportunity to know more. I'm a flow of IT, and I would like to visit Thailand uh, more time anytime soon to get more insight and the opportunity available for Christian business. And, uh, uh, it's, it's very good that you know. All right. I'm so sorry. I think you're having some issue on the connection. Yeah. Um, well, thank you for that. Um, well, we appreciate you being on the webinar right now. Uh, if you have more questions to um, to Mr. Azapardi, you can go ahead and use the Q&A tab or you can email him directly. I will disable your um, audio right now. So um, anyone else who would like to ask some questions to the presenter? Oh, sir, there is a one question here. Uh, can you please give an overview of the agriculture sector? Okay. Well, the agriculture sector is, is a very small sector. Um, uh, to my knowledge, and I stand to be corrected, it uh, accounts for less than 3% of our GDP. So while we are self-sufficient um, in some uh, products, such as dairy and and vegetables, we import most of um, our agricultural products 
mainly from uh, the European Union. Uh, for obvious reason, you know, because being part of the single market, uh, there are no tariffs when it comes to trade between members of the European Union. However, the agricultural sector is is um, very small, um, and and uh, unfortunately, I must say, the number of farmers is is uh, um, getting smaller and smaller. Nevertheless, um, we are looking at other alternatives such as smart farming. Um, Honestly, I'm not an expert uh, into, into farming, but but um, it, honestly speaking, it's not a sector which offers um, huge opportunities. Um, I must be honest about that. Okay, thank you. Next question is, do you have food industry from Mr. Uh, from Mother Murphy's um, company? Other questions, do you have food industry? Um, if if I understand the question well, um, well, we do have a number of, as I said, manufacturing um, is still going strong in Malta, uh, despite despite that um, you know over the recent years um, it it suffered it suffered a lot in Europe in general. Um, manufacturing has becoming more and more sophisticated. Um, we're, we're leaving behind the traditional manufacturing and going for more, uh, what we call it, automation. Um, having said that, yes, we have a number, of course, uh, quite a number of, of companies in Malta producing um, several uh, and different kinds of products, uh, most of which um, to export. As I said in the beginning, Malta... Malta's uh, market is very small, with a population of less than half a million people. So most of the companies, I say the majority of the companies who have a base in Malta, um, they are there to manufacture, to produce and to export, not just to the European Union, but to different parts of the world. I don't know by heart the names of companies um, which manufacturing food products, something which I believe uh, if you log on um, uh, the website of Malta Enterprise, I believe you will find the list there. But mm -hmm. yes, of course, there are there are a number of, of companies in Malta. Okay, thank you. Um, third question is, uh, please share landscape of the finance and insurance sector in terms of industry size, in terms of local and foreign market players. That's from NBI Investments. Yeah, well, the, the financial sector um, and the banking sector is, is a very important sector. In um, there are a large number of companies um, especially in the insurance field, uh, for, for various reasons. First of all, um, we are an, an EU jurisdiction. So um, this, is, this is something which I like to highlight. Being a member of the European Union, you are um, heavily regulated, um, and, which is good, and you have to play by the rules. So irrespective of the opinion of many people about um, Malta or any other country of the European Union, um, we offer, um, how shall I put it, um, a credible um, base when it comes when it comes to financial services. Um, so yes, it is very important. What I would recommend you. Uh, the the public entity, which um, so to say, governs. I don't want to say governs, which deals, which with any financial services activity. Uh, it's called Finance Malta. Finance Malta. Uh, if you Google Finance Malta, there you will have all the details. Um, for when it comes 
to banking, to insurances, and to all the other sectors of the financial services sector which exist in Malta. Um, needless to say, of course, we have the Malta Financial Services Authority, um, which is the uh, regulator. Um, but for information which could be important um, to people like the uh, person, I don't know if he's a gentleman or a female, uh, who asked me this question, um, kind of log Finance Malta. Um, and you find all the information there. Uh, but yes, financial services, they're very, very important. The biggest opportunities which exist right now in Malta are in the banking sector. As, as I've said in my presentation, the economy has been growing drastically. We have new emerging sectors. Um, we have cemented our reputation um, as the blockchain island. Many big companies uh, have set base in Malta already. We are copying the same model when it comes to um, artificial intelligence. We are currently, as I said, drafting a regulatory framework. AI is not something which we have created, but it is not regulated. So this is a niche which we are uh, exploring together with many experts. There are a lot of interest by uh, big companies, including here in the United States, about what we're doing. And we are very optimistic that this would be another um, uh, success sector. And so the the one of the most needs, if I can call it like that, I don't say needs, but opportunities that exist is in the banking sector. We have only two major banks in Malta um, and a number, quite a number of smaller banks. Mm -hmm. But considering how much the economy grew and it's still growing, um, there is a demand for more banks. So there is the clientele. Um, um, we need um, the entities to supply, more entities to supply than clientele. Okay. Thank you for that, sir. The next question, the next question is, uh, we are in the mining industry. Uh, please, please let me know what we can expect from Malta in terms of mining sector? Well, mining, unfortunately, I don't have much to say. I mean, we definitely don't mine in Malta. Um, we have tried to, to, to uh, look for oil. We didn't succeed, but we remain optimistic. But uh, mining, especially um, on land, inland, considering the, the, the size of the country, it's something which... which uh, it's not something for Malta, I'm afraid. Okay, thank you. So um, next question is, um, all right, thank you so much. The webinar, he said that the webinar is great. Thank you. So uh, where can, oh, sorry, I missed this one. Uh, please, what are the items we import? Because I would like to know more and take opportunity of agricultural stuff. Um, he is from Ghana. What, what what do you mean? I I, I don't uh, I don't uh, get it. Um, he's asking about what are the items uh, that Malta usually import, because he would like to know more about and take the opportunity of agricultural stuff. Well, let me let me give you an example of what we import more or less, right? Yes. And what we export from and to the United States. So key items Malta uh, imports uh, from the United States, for example, include fuel and gas, um, aircraft engines, aircraft parts, uh, machinery parts, parts for gas turbines, motor boats, yachts, navigation instruments, uh, and also series uh, mm. for the manufacturing of bread. Um, I, I wasn't aware that we even import that uh, from the United States. As I said, most of our food products, and this is also um, because of the regulations of the European Union, 
when it comes to food safety. Um, we import most of our food stuff from the European market. Okay. Um, on the other hand, we export to the United States, for instance, um, uh, medicines or devices for therapeutic uh, purposes, um, electronic integrated circuits for mobiles, whatever, uh, mm -hmm. switches, automotive uh, semiconductors, video recording and repro reproducing equipment, air conditioning, uh, machines, aircraft parts, toys, uh, a wide range. But food okay. products, to my knowledge, at least I stand to be corrected, we import most of our uh, products from the European Union market. Okay, thank you. So um, with regards to that last question, um, I might, um, maybe um, the, one, the uh, gentleman from Ghana, maybe you can reach out to the present, to uh, Mr. Azopardi to reach out uh, the representative of Malta in um, Africa so he can definitely assess you. So I'll actually put the email address later after we answer all the questions. So the next question is, um, where can I find written information online regarding starting a new business in Malta? Well, just to, before I um, let him answer it, I just want to inform you that this uh, slide or this PDF file will be sent to all the attendees today. So um, yeah, go ahead, sir. Um, is there any website or online um, regarding starting business in Malta? Yeah. So... Um... To start a business, I would recommend you um, to make contact with um, the entity which I mentioned earlier on, um, Malta Enterprise, it's called. Okay. So um, I'm trying to remember the, um, I'm, I'm seeing, I'm checking if I have the website. No, I don't. It's okay. MaltaEnterprise.com, I think. Yeah, it's okay. Uh, if you Google um... it, it will come up. Okay, um, Mr. Azopardi will going to send me the website um, soon, and then he will, I will Fantastic. forward it to all the attendees. And also, just to let you know, Mr. Paul Baker, we will have a trade mission in Malta next year, so maybe you can consider that. So let's move on to the next question. How would startup tax structures in Malta compare with other European Union countries such as Ireland or Switzerland? Well, this is this is a is, is a very a very um, uh, interesting topic, um, and and as I said, um, I cannot give you a very a very straightforward answer. Um, oh. We have a very competitive uh, tax regime. Uh, I want to make it clear that the reason why we attract a lot of companies to Malta is not simply because of our tax regime but because of the ecosystem, the entire ecosystem, which we have created over the years. Yes, we cannot deny that our um, uh, tax regime is one of the most uh, competitive um, in the European Union, in Europe and beyond. Mm -hmm. um, having said that, it all depends on the kind of investment which um, someone intends to make in the country. So if you open a shop, for instance, it's one thing. If you open a factory to manufacturing whatever, um, that's something else. Both when it comes to um, uh, taxation, then when it comes to uh, incentives, uh, soft loans. As I said, I would be more than happy to provide you um, uh, through through um, uh, our coordinator here from Trade Council, all this information. Okay. Um, our corporate tax is um, thirty five percent. Having said that, after you you um, distribute the dividends, and and uh, we give the reimbursement, uh, it goes as low as five percent. Okay. Um, ha having said that, uh, it all depends on the kind of investment which um, someone intends to make. Uh, and I would be more than happy. I mean, as I said, if you log on 
on the website of Malta Enterprise. Um, I'm pretty sure we'll send you um, the the uh, email or the uh, uh, website, um, as well as other entities such such as Finance Malta, which I I've mentioned earlier. Um, there you find all the details, um, including which I may forward to you directly uh, a document which is called uh, "Doing Business in Malta," which covers entirely anything any investor would need to know um, would need to know about about uh, doing such a step. Okay, thank you, sir. So um, next question is for uh, from Mr. Paul Baker. Uh, we have heard that Malta has some problems with the influx of immigrants on the island. Is this true? Do you see a solution to this problem in the near future? No, not at all. First of all, um, we don't like to call it a problem. Migration is something which has always existed, it still exists, and will continue to exist. Uh, and while we cannot just open um, the gates to everybody to come, um, you know, unless people come legally. Um, there is also the human side of migration. We're an island um, and we cannot let people die in, in the sea. So we look also at it at the humanitarian, uh, from the humanitarian side. Okay. We, did have, we did have a number of migrants uh, in the past who has arrived in Malta. Um, the, the numbers are not alarming. Uh, you don't have to believe everything you, you watch on television. I think most of you know it already. Um, yes, there is a number of migrants in the island. We have an agreement with a number of countries. Um, so migrants who arrive to Malta are distributed um, to other countries. But we also um, invite some of them to stay in the island mm -hmm. because uh, there are many jobs um, and we need to fill the jobs. And okay. We don't distinction between race and color. Um, if people work, if people have a clean conduct, um, they are no different than than our people. Okay, thank you. Next question is for, from from uh, Miss Elizabeth. Uh, does Malta welcome the small business sector establishing business, typically hiring ten employees or less, or are you looking for a corporate or manufacturing business only? No, no. Uh, we we um, welcome any kind of business as long as it's clean business, right? Okay. Um, so yes, we don't have multinational companies in Malta. We cannot cater for multinational companies. Mm -hmm. So the businesses in Malta are medium and small sized businesses. So yes, of course we do. Okay, perfect. Um, next question is for from Mr. Hayden. What type of companies are that attractive incentive packages intended for. Pardon, can you kindly repeat it? Sorry, what type of companies are the attractive incentives packages intended for? Well, as I said, I cannot, I cannot give you a, a blank, a blank answer. Mm -hmm. It all depends on the kind of investment. Um, you know, it's not just the money which companies put in setting up a company but uh, depending on how much they employ and so there's so many factors okay. um, which include as i said i will uh, through you if i if i may i can send um, um the information um which is also available on the website of malta enterprise mm -hmm. which gives a general detail of all the uh, incentives such as taxation, soft loans, uh, funding for R and D, you name it. Okay. Um, but but no, we, we welcome any kind of business. Okay, thank you. So you will just answer all the questions that is currently posted. So um, in case that you still have questions, um, you can contact um, me directly or Mr. Azopardi. So next question is uh, with regards to the re recycling sector. I have seen waste yeah. paper and possibly plastic scrap being exported out of Malta. 
is there any current initiative to close the loop by recycling in Malta itself, assuming this is not being done already? Well, when it comes when it comes to alternative energy, we like to call it um, the environment. Uh, we are in the process of um, a general master plan, right? Um, and which includes uh, alternative energy, also um, um, by recycling um, uh, waste. Um, uh, there, I know I'm very aware that there has been ongoing discussions. We have a small plant in Malta, um, which I must admit is not sufficient enough to deal with our um, general waste. Um, the, 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 the question is whether um, the waste we produce in Malta is sufficient enough to, um, to uh, generate uh, a power plant, for instance. So yes, we do recycle. Um, I stand to be corrected, but I believe that we export that recycled uh, material. However, um, if one looks at the general picture, um, to deal with waste uh, and recycling uh, of waste, especially to uh, produce uh, energy, uh, this is something which, you know, there are studies on the table uh, which are being considered seriously by the government. Um, and we acknowledge that we do, we have to do something uh, the soonest. Okay, thank you. By the way, that last question came from Mr. Brian Menezes. Next question is, uh, came from Mohammed Atman. Would Malta be interested to be a major hub for petroleum products, storage, and re-export? Um, I don't know. I don't know. This is something which um, we could explore. Okay. Um, I have to ask. I tell you honestly, I'm not. I'm not uh, an expert in every field. Um, mm -hmm. We are a hub, considering um, uh, our geographical position. Logistics is is a is a very big sector in Malta for obvious reasons. Uh, when it comes to petroleum uh, and gas, this is something which I don't know the agreements the country has, uh, if there exists any clauses which allows or not. Uh, but I would be more than happy if I would receive a request to, to explore this possibility. Perfect. So, Mr. Atman, if you can get his email later, uh, you can email him directly. Uh, maybe he can forward to the, you to the right person to possibly uh, answer the question um, for you. And next question is um, came from Mr. Rich Bachelor. I'm a professional services management consulting and training company that is based in Canada, but looking for European Union base for expansion. Expansion. What support would Malta have to enable that? Well, this is um, this is something interesting, and to my knowledge, we do have we do have uh, something similar in Malta. Um, as I said, I'm not in a position to give you uh, a straight answer. Um, um, about what kind of um, support you would get. Uh, nevertheless, I would be more than happy to put you in contact directly with the right people uh, mm -hmm. at Malt Enterprise, and they will uh, guide you, I can assure you, uh, accordingly. Okay, that's perfect. Um, I will still have two more questions here. So um, last, um, second to the last, um, Following on my last question in regards to the mining sector, what would be the best way to introduce mining project to the investor community in Malta, whether through public company investment for private or private sector, nine equity uh, mining, 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 because now I, I, I'm reading the, the questions. I don't understand actually what kind of mining. Mm. Because mining could be for blockchain, but if I understand that mining, you know, um, the traditional way, digging um, uh, for whatever um, uh, resource, um, this is something which, you know, I don't think there's, a, there's any uh, opportunity. Okay. Well, uh, Mr. Albuquerque, just uh, send me an email or please send him an email directly for further um, 
for more detailed information about your question and we, we will definitely um, connect to the right person. So yes, uh, we will send, uh, once I receive the copy of the Doing Business in Malta, we will definitely send it to all yeah. the attendees. Um, yeah. like, second to the last question is, as an American citizen who wants to open a business in Malta, can I do that without becoming a citizen of Malta or having a Malta citizen as a partner? From Paul Baker. Or, no, no, I mean, anybody um, could come and invest in Malta. So, of course, uh, we have American companies in Malta. Um, you don't have to be uh, to have a multi citizenship. Uh, if you would invest in Malta and the investment, of course, would be approved, um, then, needless to say, you would get um, a residence permit. Mm -hmm. um, so, no, you don't have to become a multi citizen to, to do business in Malta. Uh, we welcome any business, not just uh from america but from from many parts of the world and not only from uh, europe so uh, you are mostly welcome all right uh, if i may come excuse me if i may come to the comment on the document doing business in malta i am i will be more than happy um to forward to you or as i said i can provide you the link on the website of Malt Enterprise, there's absolutely everything um, following this this uh, Skype, Skype call, oh, the, the webinar, sorry. I still think the old fashion about Skype. <laughs> All right, thank you for that. Um, last question is, would Malta allow investors to build and own their own artificial islands for tourism from Mohammed Atman? Um, that's an interesting question. That's an interesting question. In fact, um, there is an ongoing debate, not debate. Um, we have just conducted a study, uh, of course, um, thanks to international experts, um, for the possibility of, um, um, how do you call it in English, um, um, to extend the, the, the land, artificial artificial land um, so I'm not sure about islands um, you know that I, 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 I cannot give you an answer but yes we are already in the phase of not in the first phase we have discussed this there's still an ongoing debate but we have also commissioned a study um, to identify, identify um, which parts of the island could be extended uh, to the sea. So in the future, in the very near future, there would definitely be opportunities uh, on where to um, invest and build on artificial land. It will be on the sea, but I cannot promise that it would be an island, um, like countries in Dubai or places like that. And it's not simply for ecological reasons, but also for, you know, for logistic reasons. Okay. Um, we are in the middle of a big sea and uh, we have deep sea uh, around the island. So um, I don't think it will ever be an artificial island. All right. Thank you for that. So I think that's all the question. Now, if you have detailed question to your, um, to Mr. Azopardi, I'm sending him, I'm sending his email again. You can email him directly. Um, this topic is very um, interesting and very impor informative. Thank you for that in, um, presentation. Now, um, I would like to end this webinar by giving you my email address. So if you have some questions about or about today's webinar, you can either email um, me and, or Mr. Azopardi. And also, if you would like to join or be a member of International Trade Council, you can definitely send me an email. Um, also, as I mentioned earlier, we will have a trade mission in Malta um, early next year. So if those, if you are interested to attend, you can answer this survey and you can also email me directly. Um, we're thinking about first quarter of next year for a trade mission in Malta. Again, I would like to thank everyone for attending this webinar and we look forward um, to see you all um, exploring business in Malta and we look forward to see you all to be in the trade mission and um, 
also in the future webinar of International Trade Council. Again, thank you so much, and you all have a wonderful day. If I may, if I may, I just send a message. Oh, um, yeah. So if one Googles uh, Malta Enterprise, uh, it's a very simple website. Um, there you can find all, all the information and the details, which I, I was not in a position um, to reply to you when it comes to anything. It has to do with uh, investing in Malta, whether it's taxation. There you can also find the, the document, which I would be also more willing, more than willing to do, but it's there doing business in Malta. Um, whereas Finance Malta, if one Googles, it comes up immediately. It's the entity dealing with the financial services sector in Malta. And there you find all the information um, and any information which you don't, uh, cannot find, kindly invite you to um, email me directly. Uh, all the information regarding um, insurances, banking, uh, and so on and so forth. Um, so I would like to take the opportunity to thank you, Ron, um, for giving me um, this this opportunity to to do this webinar, and to all to everyone who has joined. And I apologize if I was not able to provide you with all the answers. Um, I'd rather not answer rather than giving you incorrect information. Um, but I would be more than happy to, um, if you request more information directly, um, to, to either guide you to the right people or to provide you with information directly. Thank you all. And I wish you, Ron, and every one of you uh, who has joined this webinar a good morning, good evening, good afternoon. It depends which part of the world you are. Thank you. And again, thank I will you so much. You're welcome. Again, I will send you the copy of the presentation, uh, the link of uh, Malta Enterprise and Finance Malta, and the recording will be posted to our YouTube channel. Again, um, thank you so much, His Excellency Keith Azopardi, Ambassador of Malta to, to the United States. Um, again, good morning, good afternoon, or good, good, uh, good night, depending on which part of the world you are. And from those people who is in USA, happy Thanksgiving. Thank you and have a wonderful yeah. day. Goodbye. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.